first simple thing I want to discuss, we're doing a barn, barn owl, was I used to see my kids' wall, as in heffalumps and walls, so a wall, a barn wall. Um, but the first thing you notice is your photograph is a different scale than the paper. So again, today it might be a little <coughs> bit like teaching granny to suck eggs. You'll probably all be at different abilities. And what I want to do is take the lowest ability. And if you haven't, if you, if you put up with me, if it's something you've already learnt, but if I can cover everything, then everybody's covered. Yeah, it makes sense, makes it fair. Um, so even some of the basics I might have touched on before, or you might have heard before, if I, if I run through it all. So let's start from the very beginning with scaling, simple scaling. The photograph is a different shape to your paper. How do we deal with that most quickly? Well, it's a very, very simple way to do it. You will simply take your photograph and decide if you want to lose top or bottom of your paper. I've decided to have a bit more bottom on mine, but you could have more top if you wanted. Um, you can, it depends where you place your, your arrow. So if you take the photograph and you place it at the top, as I've done here, of your picture, and you then bring an imaginary, if you've got a ruler you can, or another piece of paper, a line from that corner to this corner, all the way down, where it meets there, is where you cut off. So simple. Did you all know that? No. Not good. <laughs> no, teaching is, that's, it, that's how part of my money I'll do it. That's, that's two P's work. Um, simple way to, to scale, isn't it? So if you wanted more of the top, you'd hold the, paper, the picture at the bottom, and you would go from that corner to this corner, and where it meets there would be where your picture would be. So it's as simple as that. If you wanted top and bottom, you could do both. You could do this way and this way. You'd have equal amounts. So it's very, very simple, isn't it? Do you understand that then? Yeah. Right, so you, just so you know where you are, because you're going to scale. And the next thing I want you to do is to scale on the edge of your photograph and on your paper. I want you to go halfway, approximately, you have to measure, approximately halfway, halfway, and then halfway again. So we're going into quarters and eighths if you can. Quarters will just do, if you, if you just want to do quarters at the moment, but you'll see why as you go along. So, Mark on your photograph the same, half and quarters, and all the way around, half and quarters approximately. They should obviously uh, work out as being opposite the halves and halves. Um, and on your paper, on the tape, you can mark off the quarters as well. And this is for simple scaling. Now you could even mark grids across from those quarters on your paper, if you have a lot to do. <laughs> we'll not talk about that this time. Right, so the, the, the way you can carry pastels the pastels that I've brought along for you today are in their own lovely little boxes, strong blues and colour. And they have this special foam insert, um, larger or smaller boxes. Notice that the boxes you've got still have the papers on them, but the boxes I use, I take the papers off. The reason for that is that I like to be able to use pastels sideways, not just for the tips. And these larger pastels will do that. So we're okay doing smaller works or doing detailed works, but if you want to do bigger, more gestural, sweeping works, you probably need to take the pastel papers off. Now, then you wonder what colour you've got, how to remember them. I, for demonstrations like this, I keep two boxes, one with the papers on so I can say to the camera, I'm now using number so-and-so, and I've got to remember what it is, um, or I don't know which colour I've got, so I've got two boxes and I keep them the same. And you'll note that as I use the travel set, I've actually got them with the papers taken off in one box and left on with another so I can tell you what colours I'm using. <laughs> the basic travel set should enable you to do almost anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, I've got a, a, I've got a carry case here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Which is quite nice. Handle so you can carry it around. And it's got sliding lid at the top, which means that I can take out two trays inside. So, two different trays, which is quite handy. You notice again the paper's all taken off so I can use them sideways on. Okay. paper, and people often say, does it matter which side of the paper I use? Well, for instance, you've got an ombre's pad and the pad is slightly rougher on one side of the paper than the other. Now, if you're using something like pan pastels, which are a powdered pastel, 
you haven't got to worry too much because they pile so much past along that it literally covers the whole surface and you blend and rub it in. With harder, with these soft pastels, but they're hard pastels, but with um, these stick pastels, um, I tend to prefer personally to use the smoother side of the paper because the other side is more orange peely and you will get that orange peel effect. And if you want to block it right out, it can be a nuisance. So if you want the orange peel effect, it's lovely, but I tend to go for the smooth side of the paper. We're going to have a look at that today. We're going to have a look at how this how pastel goes on to these bits of paper. And the difference between these and even using um, just all of the cartridge paper. And shortly I'm going to show you the difference in the two, the two papers. How to use the water as well. So if you've got your measurements like this, now this will be the next part, but I'm going to stop you once you've got these measurements done because we're going to start the drawing in a moment. Before we start the drawing, I want to just do this little demonstration about the pastels themselves and the ways of using them onto paper so we go close up on the camera on that. Um, so it, so if you've got your courses all the way around, we'll be ready to, to move on. And the next stage we're going to do, after I've shown you the pastels close up, is we have to find the points in space the salient, the main points of where things are. And they see on my paper, probably even though you can't quite see it, they've made little yellow crosses, one there, one there, one here, one here. And I've chosen points that to me are the most important points in the picture as to where the, uh, the important places of the owl come. So the bottom of his face here, just where the wing joins here, the top of the wing here, the, top of the lower part of this wing here and the part way along the wing. And to find those, what we do is, and again, a ruler can be a ruler. A ruler can be quite useful. I'm going to catch up with time. You see, a ruler can be quite useful, but we have to say, right, where does this point come? Where does this point come? Right, here's my quarter, and uh, about a, qu a quarter within that down. So there, there, there's my quarter line. There's the halfway line within that. Then the quarter without the quarter way down. If I come across with my pencil, very lightly. And if I come across just under halfway here, where, they, where those two meet, I make my little cross, you see. And that's, that would be the same on your, on your actual photograph. I'm just explaining how it works before we go ahead and do it in a minute. The same here. Where does that come? It's just to the right of the centre here. So if it was on your photograph, if I had my photograph marked out, which this one is. So, for instance, I've got... Um, to find the, where the wing joins here and if I come across from my a half way down this quarter so in other words one, two and there's my half way there half way down this quarter which is just here that links up so that's just on that mark there it's just above the quarter mark I come across from there and where it would join up is almost directly below that half there so where those two points come on making a little cross, do you all understand what I'm getting at there? Yeah. So you're scaling from here to here, and you're taking the most important points of what you want and where they are on the scale. I'm leaving that a moment because I want to go on to actually showing you the use of the paper. A cup of water. Right, you notice I put the pastel on the cartridge paper first. I haven't put the water on and then the pastel. You can do water and pastel, but it will just go... Boom. You know, it's, it's very dark and you can't move it. I've done demos where I really amuse them because I just put on all of these colours just like that all over the paper first, knowing what I'm going to mix, because of course you can mix the two together as you go along. Um, let's take a really bright colour with that. Uh, you can mix these together as you go along. But it means that I can also pick up with a brush, a wet brush, if I'm going to use water with it, and I can paint with the pastels, literally, as in a paint. So let's just do that. We'll take, I haven't bought my watercolour brushes today. This is my acrylic set, so you can see I keep a very straightforward and basic set. What I have got amongst these, I should have somewhere. Yes, I've got one there, is a rake brush. I'll play with that in a minute, because you might want to use these today. I've only bought a couple today, today with you, but uh, just to give you an idea of what we can do. This won't matter because we're not using water or pastels today, we're just using pastels, so you won't use them as much, but you can be play if you want. Uh, I would usually use a soft mop for this job now, so I've got quite a soft brush, and I've only got my heavier ones here. These are acrylic brushes, so they're slightly more bouncy, but if we just take that, and you see you can then pick it up and you can paint with it. And that means you can do textures, you can blend, 
usually go from the light colour to the darker colour. And when I've done this for a demo, as I say, I've actually got all of these colours ready to mix. I can mix in with this if I want to. Um, so I can take another colour and blend in. Straight away. And when they dry, they're, so they're very dark when they're wet, they will actually dry a bit lighter. But you can paint with them in that sort of way. And of course, imagine if we wanted to use a fine brush now. Say I wanted to get some grasses here. I can pick this up and I could start to... Um, I put a bit of heavy pastel down there. Put a bit much, much darker. And they're so plastic as well. You can move them with your fingers when it's like this. You can actually paint as if it's like with oil paints. Um, it's very plastic. You can work in that way. But you see these, 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 these um, cone brushes and... Um, uh, combs and rakes. This is a rake, it's certainly larger, the combs are much finer. But for effects that you come in, how would you get that effect with pastels? Unless you're using it with water. We're going to play in a minute and see if we can just drag the pastels with a brush, or we can use a bit of water if we just mix it and use it on, on the on the sugar on the pastel paper. This is pastel paper now, and it's the, the wrong side of it if you like, it's the rough side. So that gives you an idea on that and how we could take much finer brushes. Um, and where you would have a hell of a job just using pastel pencil, we can pick up a colour, find a darker, darker one. You've got to, you notice with the, this is this is the midnight set, by the way. This is the dark set, and it's just amazing how many darks. Remember, your shadows can be all different warms and cools, and, and every colour has a um, a warm and cool, and that is called the colour hue. That's it's good old bloke hue that I talk about. Um, we can pick that paint up. That brush is hard, let's get it going. And we can then paint with that elsewhere. We can pick it up and come right over here and put it through here. Um, you could even use a sponge. We could, we could actually take a sea sponge and pick up that. We'll have a piece of paper up separately, like a palette, to mix it in. Then take the sponge work and put them onto the pastel. And that could happen even on pastel paper. Let's just do that and see what happens with the pastel paper. Because I want to show you how we're going to blend with that anyway. Now, the, te the basic techniques <coughs> of pastel... When you want to feel these pastels later, this is a very hard pastel. And hard pastels don't like to go onto wet paper. If I put some pastel, if I take a hard pastel onto that, it will want to cut into the paper. It's quite hard to get it to go in there, especially with a softer paper, a higher quality paper. So the hard, the hard pastels are cheaper, but um, they're not as fluid. And you can see there, look how thin that's... If I, if I now take one of the ordinary unisons, um, let's find a, find a unison of a slightly brighter colour. Yeah, I'll just take a, a, a red there. You can almost see how, how soft that is compared to this now. And look how much thicker it is, yeah? Mm. It's much more creamy and thicker. So with <coughs> water and pastel, you're best off using the unisons or a soft pastel, but these hard pastels are good at the end. Say we're doing a pastel here, and let's take, um, let's try putting a, a, a light over a dark, or deeper. I'm going to rub that in now, you see that's quite a texture, that's almost like a sand with glass paper. You can get different textured papers as well. Textured, the papers come almost like a satin, you can get them like velvet, you can get them with a sanded finish, you can get them with a tooth finish like this. There's a good six or seven, at least, surfaces that you can paint on. Some people even paint on um, MDF and prime that with a, with a certain... Um, so we've got that and we can, we can block and blend. What we're doing today is blocking and blending. We're going to block in a colour, we're going to gently blend it. Now, this is where these can come in, because if you want to blend something very finely and you can't quite get at it, um, put a bit of that here. We can blend with our fingers, that's blending. Feathering is when you use the, the pastel very, very lightly across something like this. Little strokes, feathered strokes, that's called feathering. Um, stippling is when you dot and dash it. And now bearing in mind that and use the use of a sponge, you can imagine that you can get more effect with the sponge in the same way if you were to actually mix them up and then dip it in. This is dry. Can we use water with it? Yes, you can, but it's not going to work in the same sort of way because this is much more absorbent paper. So it's, it can be done, look. We can draw it out. We can take the... And when it dries, it's going to dry fixed. So what I tend to do with water and pastel is, if I'm doing a, 
a hot pressed paper and a landscape or whatever, I'll do all my undercoats first with water and pastel, so pastel and then the water, then perhaps another few, um, a bit more working into it, another couple of coats, thin, thin coats, let it dry and it's fixed. You haven't got a spray fixative. I don't use fixative much because I find it knocks the highlights down, it cuts the whites back. And if you put a double mount on something, which is what I've got over here to show you later on, a good double mount and cellophane, it will hold it away from the glass anyway and the colours stay nice and bright. So I don't bother with fixative personally. You can't even use hairspray and the stupid thing about airlines is they won't allow on oil paints but they will allow on acrylics. They won't allow on um, fixative spray but they will allow on hairspray. Um, hairspray isn't always that good because it can be oily, it can make a mess of the paper, so I'm not that keen. And even say fixative is it's your choice. It's it also <laughs> <laughs> right um, blending as well. We're talking about blending and finally blend, finally blending. Um, we can blend. Uh, so that, that's that's over something just with the pastel. And um, of course we've got cross hatching as well. Cross hatching would be not just feathering lightly like this, but cross hatching will be going across each other the colour in different directions like that. So that's cross hatching and depends on how large you do them. So we've got stippling, we've got cross hatching, we've got blocking and blending and then we've got these cotton wool buds where if you wanted to do something very very fine, um, put a bit of that there, if I wanted to blend in but be very very careful, say on an owl's wing, which is why I brought these, you can just very carefully blend in fine details with one of these. If you want to remove pastel, let's say you get too much pastel on, now that's, you know, I won't be able to put any more on that because when you get two or three layers of pastel, you can't work over the top. It just becomes too thick. You just kind of put more on. So you want to remove it. You've got two ways. You can get your sandwiches out. And you can rub it off with a bit of bread. Yeah. Or easier still, a dry, stiff brush, a fairly stiff brush. Those bristle brushes are ideal for this. I don't know which one I use here because these are stiff enough. As long as they're dry, you can rub the pastel away with a brush. Yeah. If you rub with your fingers, it's just going to smudge it, but a brush, will, a stiff brush will take them off. So you've got two ways to remove there. Blue tack will also do it to a degree, but it gets a bit messy after a while. But blue tack is best with actual sort of drawing techniques when you're doing shading or smoothing, or you get these really shiny effects of skin or highlights. So bread is okay. The simplest way is a stiff brush. Simple as that. Um, we can use it on watercolour paper. We can paint with water. We can even use some water on here. If you need that effect, say you want to uh, get details or something very fine, you want to lead one into another. We can block, we can blend, um, and we can use the texture of the paper as well, because having said this, if we've got... Um... Now, you can see the texture of the paper. Not something we really want, is it? You can see it coming yeah. through here. So if we blend that in, we totally lose it. Now, they say this wouldn't matter with the pan pastels, because you'd be blending it all in with the sponges anyway. But if we now wanted to cut texture on here, and I want to come across that, if I go very lightly, then look, we can use the texture of the paper to show through. So we can actually get broken colour with it. You know what broken colour is when you have one colour next to another? You know, red and yellow close to each other make orange and so on. So we can get some wonderful effects that way. And then we only have to touch very lightly. You could do water like that, couldn't you? Hmm? Water, water would be like a... Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. So you can... So that's what I was saying about watercolour paper. That if we had a rough watercolour paper and you wanted that texture at the end, you could use that mm. you, as long as you're thinking ahead. Mm. I mean, if you really wanted to go more advanced, you could start making, cutting the papers out and having various different papers in your landscape and building up the textures. Um, I like to put on the first coats and make sure that they're well fixed or well blended. Um, and then I don't touch them after that if I can help it. Just a little bit of blending if, if at all. Because what happens with pastel, the way that pastels work, is these little particles, these little pigments, reflect the light. And if I put on, I should better show you that here even, but if I put that onto there, look how bright that is, and I push really hard. But if I do that, look how it deadens immediately. It's gone almost yeah. brown. Yeah. Mm. So if we block and blend the whole first piece, you get softer tones, but if you want something brighter, then you've got to leave it Look how different that is. Mm -hmm. Hugely different. If you want the freshness, you must not touch it afterwards. The last coats, the last marks you make, leave them. Don't fiddle about and don't rub them. A little bit like watercolour. You know how if you put it on fresh, it's, it's immediate, it's wet in wet, it's lovely. And if the more you work at it, the more you lay it, the muddier it gets, the browner it gets, and you lose it altogether. Handy to have pastels on that, because I've often brought a watercolour back afterwards by working pastel over the top.
you can put the highlights back in and you can work them gently but again it's blending it's being careful don't overdo it so it looks like a sore thumb it stands out but yes you can use watercolor as you can use acrylic inks you can use watercolor as a foundation so here today we're going to do a basic demonstration of the traditional way is blocking and blending it's to use the pastel paper it's to oh yeah so another little warning um background colored papers you've got different colored papers why why do you think that might be a danger it's a good point if you leave the color showing through yes but no paper is colour fast. They will all change much more than the pastels will. We've even put these high quality pastels on the sunlight and they change colour. If you put a piece of paper over them, they will even change colour. But the paper certainly will. So if you leave little bits of paper or you leave lots of paper shining through as one of your colours, there's a chance later that it will change. Now, it's, I'm not saying you mustn't do it. I'm just saying that you know, if you've sold a piece and it goes in somewhere where it's very light, then the paint is going to look quite different years, years, years on. So... If you want to have a colour showing through, I would either put an acrylic ink coat on or um, mount card better in some ways because mount card acid free is usually stronger, a, a better tone. But usually the paper colours will change later. People don't realise that. It may not matter to you too much. If it's kept in a dark room, it won't matter. But the ways round it are to put the coats on first, on the undercoats first and rub and block, block and blend. So you've got thin coats, don't make them too thick, or use water on the watercolour paper and that way mm you know those coats are going to stay there. Or if you're not going to use water and pastel, use the acrylic inks or something that will stay a colour. And then don't do too much blending. Make sure that you use fresh coats of colour as much as possible. And that's another reason I take the, um, the papers off my pastels is because uh, I can then use the pastel sideways and not just the tips. Because what you find yourself doing is using you've got the paper, just the tip of the pencil, and you can have little scratchy marks like a chicken has been going after grain, you know. Um, so there we are, that, that's basics. Bread, stiff brush, they're all here if you need them. Um, earbuds if you want to just blend a little bit. How we can use water, use the idea of mixed medium, pastel over watercolour, pastel over acrylic inks. The ways of texturing with pastel, of using the texture from underneath as well, if the paper's got texture. Lots of ways to do it. Now you've got, say, a medium texture today, so we won't be bothering about the texture too much. It might give you a little bit, but you will be doing some blending. And there's nothing to stop us from using blending with this. I mean, for instance, if I take, um, for instance, let me see, if I lose an orange. If we've got an owl, and we've blended that from an orange through to a, to a softly blend that through. Then bring it lighter still afterwards. You see how we can just delicately blend. You don't want to overdo it. Just a little touch can do. Don't, don't overdo it. We bring that through to a much darker... Where's my deeper purple? Um, that's not so black, that one. I'll use one of these darks, it won't matter. Now, if I just softly... Do, say I want to use my cotton wool bud. I can just blend that down softly if I can't get my finger in there. I can drag that colour through if I wanted to. Just very, very subtly use my finger if I want to there. But look how soft and we can get the blending there. But let's say I wanted a much sharper line. I can use the pastel edge like that. But if I wanted a much, much sharper line, can we use the brush just to pick up a little? And this is on the pastel paper. Now when you're using a brush, and you want a point, it's not just a matter of spinning it to make a point. If we make it into a blade, it makes a much better point, even for watercolouring or any other work. Make that into a blade, and then can we just drag? So we can pick up some of that. So we can just drag these little bits of feather coming through here. Yeah? Be inventive. Don't just, and the same, could we do it with the light? Let's just take a bit of white. I mean, how, how far can we go with this? If I bring the white over that, now again, the thicker the pastel is, the harder it's going to be to bring something over. But is it possible to bring... I don't know. You know, I really don't know if this is going to work. We're going to go. That's a very, very light cream. Let's see if we can pick a bit of it up on here. That's bringing the dark into the cream more, isn't it? But that's interesting because... You know the effect of the owl's wing, we're already getting that sort of feathery effect. So we'll find out what we can and can't do. That I've mentioned, now what I haven't done is talking about lighter colours. Um, working on a darker paper, especially if you've already made the paper darker. I need to sharpen that one, that's been blunted. But uh, the pastel pencils, and these are quite a good quality. When you do want good quality pastel pencils, there's in the same way that when you're doing watercolour, it's 
not a saving to buy cheap watercolours of all of the paints. The SAA, for instance, do their own makeup watercolours, which are quite reasonably priced, almost the same price as students' watercolour, and they are good. Um, top quality watercolours will go twice as far. They're much more transparent, they're much thinner, and they, they look much more, they, they behave differently, they look much more transparent and luminous. Um, and it's the same with pastels a bit. If you get really sort of cheap, nasty, hard pastels, the effect you're going to be more limited. But, oops, there we go. You can see with the pastel pencils, look, you can get, you could really sharpen that down. Now, if we're putting, we're putting dark on light here, but if we wanted to, um, I don't think the lights will show up as much, but uh, if we're using a darker background paper, and people use this especially for animal paintings these days, especially for animal paintings, then um, say a very dark velox paper or a dark uh, velvet type paper, then you're going to be able to see, oh I can't see that one on, that's too, it's too, no, it won't go over, it's in, and then they're not going to go over a thicker, thicker a pastel because these are harder, but they will show up on a dark paper. You can't see that on there because it's almost the same colour. Um, getting very fine works, but you can make a whole picture just by little strokes of the pastel pencils and building them up in just one layer, but they won't go over the heavier pastel. This is what we find. And that's going to be your detail. The more pastel you put on here, the harder it's going to be to put something on top of it until you simply can't. The harder you press, much, and, then, and the, the softer you leave it, the more pigment's going to stay there. But the, more you, the softer you put it, or the more you blend it, then it's just going to disappear. So that's your firmness that you push the pastel on with this also matters a lot but there is only so much pastel you can put on and if you put on too much then you've got to go back to your bristle brush and you're going to have to brush some away with the dry brush don't want to be a wet brush with that with the dry brush um, you're going to have to remove it then we'd have to clear that you can see how clear that is now and that then means that I can go back in there with clean colour and it will take it but if I try to put that colour over there, it, it gets lost in it. So it has to be a bit like only one or two, two, three coats maybe before you can't put any more pastel on. So that's when you find you've got to remove it to be able to put more pastel on. So blending at the beginning, thin coats, and gradually building up, and your last marks, your last coats being a la primer, being straight on and not blended, not messed up to show the pure colour. So that means we're, I think this is basic, that means we're ready to go on now to our actual pictures. So an indication of where the shapes, the different shapes of the owl are coming, um, and then just where the trees are going in the background, the, 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 the basics. We're not going to worry about the outside, we're going to paint the inside of the, the owl first, um, so we don't smudge all the, all the background. So just get your owl really well worked out differentiate between a wear feather start and stop but I want to actually start working on no, uh, uh, we've got some quite subtle colors going on here and I'm going to work in larger areas as well as the individual areas let's just make a start have you managed to work out your feathers try, try and work this it's very important try the hardest part of it is just to work out these feathers yeah. so if you have an angle here and then you put an angle there, and then you put an angle there, you know that these feathers have to equally come around, gradually making that angle up like a fan. Do you see what I mean? You can't all join. Yeah. yeah. So if you but to get the angles right, so if you've got the front angle right here, and you get this one right here, and you get this one right here, it's easy then to fill them in between equally. If you try and do them as you go around, you can be wrong by the time you get there. So just make these angles where the feathers are, Halfway, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, gradually narrow them down so you get the feathers spreading out like a fan easily. That wants to be fairly detailed because we're going to actually fill in those feathers bit by bit. We're going to not just work over the whole bird. I want to start with those wing feathers. And I like to work from my mid-tones down to my darks and then try to put the highlights on afterwards. So I'm not going to put the lights on first, I'm going to put the mid-tones and then work down to the darks, the bars, and then work back up to the lighter tones. But it just depends what's got to be done. I mean, the, the, dark, the dark bars, in fact, might be one of the things to go on towards the end, because, uh, because they go right the way through. But let's choose the colour I'm going to use, first of all. Um, yellow ochre, or... yeah. Right, so the yellow ochre 
I'm starting on this lower wing and I'm going to put the yellow ochre halfway across the feather from the bottoms of the feathers. So it takes a bit of working out, that's why I said that's why I want you to draw these feathers first because you'll get a bit lost if you try and draw them one at a time. Get them mapped out first. Leaving the paper showing in between, so it doesn't matter whether you've got light or dark paper, just leave that showing in between them until you find out where you are and what you're doing. And I'm using that pastel fairly heavily. I don't I want a fairly thick. I don't want to leave the paper showing through if I can help it. So what I've got is that. Because I want to carry on using the, the same colour wherever it is, except on the outside, I'm now going to do a bit of blocking and blending wherever the colour is as a base coat on the rest of the wing. So here, you can see it coming around. I'm going to rub it right in with my finger. So I put it on and rub it right in. And come across these other coats here too. I'm also going to rub in the feathers that I've already done to blend them in so that there's no paper showing through. Just one stroke should do it. Just one stroke through them because I don't want any of that paper. I do want a nice smooth, soft owl. A bit like sun shining over it. Just put block in gently and then blend it right into the paper so we get a lovely soft effect. Right, you can see on mine where I'm going, just in all of these areas. So you're picking out all the... I'm just picking out the yellow ochre areas, that's it, yes. So when I've got it in my hand, I use it. So I'm picking up a grey 32 now to use. And this is giving us our base coats, because we're putting these on quite thinly. By the time we've rubbed them out, we should be able to put colour on fairly easily again. So we're filling in the shape in between of the paper, in between those yellow ochre bits, on all of those flight feather pinions. Wings. And I'm just going to blend them in together. Need to sure, that, that, that's absolutely fine, yeah. So what I'm doing is just filling these areas with this grey. Okay. So there's more there if you haven't got one. And then we want to just blend those together slightly. The tips of the feathers are all absolutely that colour. But we need to blend those in to lose all that paper underneath. So they're just coming together a bit. You see how softly they're coming together there now? So just blend them in, we don't want any of the paper showing in the end. If you want to cut more bud, yes, for blending, you can do that if your pieces are a bit smaller or your lines are a bit fine. Especially if you're a big hunky builder and you've got chunky fingers, you might want to. Now, on mine, um, the actual paper is the right colour that I want for the, for the more deeper brown, so I've got a bit of a quandary here because it's 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 trying to pull me back to keep the leave the paper there but I must cover it all over. I do want pastel everywhere. Blending it well in so we're losing the vibrance of the pastel. It's very very soft. We knew that would happen, it's not a worry. Because we're going to put fresh coats on at the very end with the highlights. Just blending in everything at the moment. My darks I'm going to go on to a, a, a um, an A34 which is a warmer purpley grey. Let's go along showing it to you. Uh, that's all we're going to do next. So we're going to use a warmer grey, the A34 now. Before we do the, 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 the lights and the darks, we're going to do those at the end. Now this one we're just tinting over the existing grey you've done. We've got a bit darker to go, very gently and in detail. Um, but we're just going to get this warmer, slightly purpley grey coming down here and again we're using it quite gently I know we used the other quite hard and blended we can use this one a bit more gently because we're actually going to blend with it over the surface 
No, this one I'm using it a lot lighter and just tint it over the top of the blue where it's needed. Just feeling around the form, feeling the feathers, just hinting at it before we do the darker. If you just press hard enough, you'll, you'll get the effect you want. Just, just not too hard this time, but enough to get it on to just tint over these feathers. And it's only, you're leaving it at the ends, it's at the ends of the feathers, the tips of the feathers, it's only coming down part way. Be aware of the, these on the tip of the wing here, be aware of these smaller feathers that are coming out. When you put those darks in. Again, come and take a look if you're not sure and you'll get an idea from mine. Now we've got a choice. Do we put the light on and then put the dark on afterwards? Or do we put the dark on and then put the light on? <laughs> I think... No, I'm not. No, I'm, not. I'm, going to, I'm going to go for the light. I'm going to go for the... Yes, this is the thing, isn't it? Yeah. If we're going to really get these lights right, we've got three colours we need to use now. I've got a red 13. Um, and white is six. We're going to need a, a white as well, which is a light one. A light one. Right. I'll just go around with the first one I'm going to use. I'm going to use this red 13 first, which is a sort of slightly lighter pinky. You see the colour on there. RE13, red 13. With a bit of that warmth coming in. And this is more a, a fine line. It's 34. 34. RE34. It's, it's a very soft pink. Just to bring in these lines of the quills on the... And after, after we've done these two bits of light, we're going back into the, the darks. So again, it's just a thin line down the edge of the wing, just to bring out these lights and darks. Almost, almost one stroke job, this one. And I'm going to use the pink as well to cover the face, even though the face is lighter. I'm going to use the pink just to cover it first of all. So I'm going to cover the, cover the whole face of the owl with, with the pinky one. There's the pinky one, the RE13, yeah. yeah. Just to blend it in and give an undercoat first of all. And a little line down through between the wings again. And we've got those three colours going on, the yellow ochre, the two greys and this now fourth colour pink, just to bring out those feathers. And I'm going to come down from this to a little bit of cream, finally before I do my darks. You see the owl is almost there now, yeah? yeah. There are those warms now, the lights have almost come, so a little bit of cream is going to just bring that out. So that was my RE13, if anybody needs it. it was and I'm going to use a bit of cream next before I go to the white and then we're going down to the darks. Now owl will be almost almost there then we can get on with this. The back one's going to be very very fast. This is the hard work. <laughs> right, uh, I'm on to the last, before I use actually use white, I'm on to the last of my lighter colours and I'm on the Y6, which is a very light cream. And the Y6 is just going to catch the light on top of the quills. There's not a lot of it, this, this very light um, cream. An awful lot. I'm just bringing out the quills in the lighter areas of the owl. Okay, you can see the difference that that very light yellow has made. That cream has just brought out those lights. And it's only just on the top edges of these feathers here, you see. But we haven't put the darks in yet. That's white. That's a bit weird. But round the face there and the edges and the top tips of these feathers. Now we're onto the darks. A dark, I'm going to start with a dark 19, which is a very deep purple for these dark colours here. And carefully. Now, if you want to try the pastel pencils, if you haven't got pastel on the paper prints where the eye is, if you don't have pastel there already, then you can use pastel pencils, or you can use your um, cotton wool buds 
for this as well. So we have to use the edge of the pastel more now for this. This is this is much more difficult. So we're doing in the darks now. We've done the highlights, and we're going to go back to the white at the end. So now, when you do these marks across the feathers, remember that the bars aren't just joined up. They are slightly broken. They almost join in places, but not quite. And I'm using the very deep purple, but I'm going to go back into a blue with them as well. And this is the hard bit. This is the landscape in the background is going to be a doll. Just getting these marks right now is one of the hardest bits. This is your blue. <laughs> Awkward bit. This. <clears throat> you can see how they step. Yeah, you know, sure, yeah, they're yeah. close together here, but they step out yeah, here. Yeah. We use this deep purple first, and we go over here with a very deep blue, not a black. Deep blue. Yeah, it will give right. us the effect we want. So right. because we've got warm and cool darks. So right. use the deep purple first, and then go down to. And there's, there's hard, more dark sets. If you haven't got. Very carefully, tipping the edge of the pastel. You want something fine with pastel, you won't have to use the edge of it. And you can just dot and dash in carefully as well. So I'm now using a dark 18, which is a very, very deep blue, just to touch into some of these deep purples I've done to make the effect of black when it isn't actually black. But I do need to get these darks against the I'm not going to use actual black or it would kill it. I'm going to use these very deep colours. So I've used the very deep purple. We've gone from the cream to the... You haven't put white on it. We've gone from the cream to the very deep purple. Then onto this very, very deep blue. Just to put some of these darks in where it almost looks black. And it will totally transfigure it, which it is doing. But now you see that it looks almost like black. But it sings and it's against the paper. And now I can finish the owl completely because once I've got these darks in, once I've established these warm and cool darks, the deep purple and the deep blue, I can go back in with the white and just finish off the highlights very, very carefully on the feathers. So it isn't just the deep purple, we're using this very deep blue as well. I know it's hard, this bit is hard, especially with a great big lumpy pastel. That's why I said, you know, if you want to just use the, the tip of the pastel, the edge of the tip of the pastel, and uh, twist it on. We could have just kept it simple and gone black and white, but I think you'll agree the vibrance of that now. You can see the way the darts mm -hmm. work, yeah? Once we get the background in, that's really going to sing out. We might even make it a bit warmer in the owl later on. Might put a little bit of burnt sienna into that yet, we'll see. Right. That's, that's my darks done. I've almost, from the moment, I've almost finished the owl. I'm going in with a, a light colour. I'm going in with a white now, just to finish off. And I'm going to carefully and but thickly, <laughs> freshly, come into this owl with the, with the whites and the feather shapes across the face. Whatever it is. You're close up to them at the moment when we get them actually done. And I'm just finishing off now with a little bit of white highlighting here and there. I haven't put this in earlier deliberately because I just want to bring out the highlights now. And when I've got the background done, as I say, I might decide to come in with a bit more um, warmth. We'll see. But let's just get this done first. Okay, if you not can get that far, we're going to then loosen up and go for the background nice and easily. We're going to use a cool green to start with in the distance and block and blend with a, a turquoise. It might seem very... The one I'm using is a turquoise T3, but if you want to go a bit deeper in that, that you can do. And I just want to block in the whole of the, of the background down to here. And you'll see why in a minute. So we're going to block in and blend very lightly, just bring it across and make sure you rub it really well in. Go right around your owl, a nice turquoise, you can go darker turquoise if you've got one in your box and you want to do that. 
This is just to get the blue light in the background before I put deeper greens in. It'll be nice and quick to get the effects of this and we're going to be very soft edged. Go right down the whole of this, right across it. Right down to here. Don't worry about the other bits because we're going to be putting the highlights over the top. All we're doing is locking in a, a base for the background. And actually I'm going to also come down oh, halfway down the wing here. I'm going to go just across this bit as well. Just leaving a little bit of paper in the centre so I know where I'm going, that's all. Done that, I come back and I rub it really well in. I don't want to have any paper showing, if I can help it, I want all of that bite to be filled with this blue. For my cool. The only time this changes is sunset or sunrise. When you get a sunset or sunrise, then you get warms in the background and cools in the foreground. But for normal daylight, we've got warm in the foreground and cool in the background. So not too much pastel, just enough to really get in there and lose as much of this texture of paper as you can. Now this is why I've got an addition of paper, because I've had to add a bit on my paper without chopping it off. So I'm going to add, I'm going to bring my, I'm going to bring my blue down a bit further. I'm going to go to a dark nine, a deep green now. Deep green. So this one's a dark nine. It's a warm green. So we're going to go over the top of it now. Yes, I'm below. Now what I'm going to start doing is we're working the darks into the lighter colour. We've got a mid-tone. We're going to gradually go down darker now. So I'm going darker now with this dark green. And I'm going to start, and I'm also going to be a little textural as well. Never mind the trees, don't worry about the trees. If you want, if you're worried about where your trees are and you want to leave them, you can do. I can leave that. And if I want to put the darks in behind, look, I can just do this. But again, I'm working very lightly, and I'm letting some of that texture of the paper show because I want the feeling of the, the leaves behind. But I'm not going to leave it all textured like that. So I'm leaving the trees showing through. I'm just going in with the dark, so I'm not completely covering it. I'm just very lightly feeling the surface, feeling these lumps of dark tree and leaving light leaves in between with the turquoise. So don't just go all over it and fill it in. Very delicately now, use the top edge or the side of your pastel slightly come into the bird and feel these darker areas. Can you see what it looks like? If I hold my photograph there, you can see what I'm getting at, can't you? Yeah. I'm putting in those darker areas with the deep green. So we're going from medium down to dark. We're going to go darker than that yet with the, with the tree trunks. The edge of the pastel, the tip of the edge, just to lightly go over the surface. Don't block out all of your turquoise, it's still there. Go around the feathers, Go around the tips of the feathers here. Feel the edges. Feel the edges of your feathers. Feel the, don't don't go. Do go into these edges of these feathers now. This is where you start to pick out the edges of the feathers more. Look, there. They come in and around those feathers there. So this will be rush on and things suddenly start to happen. You'll be surprised how fast your pictures are going to come together now. But, the dark 19 we used earlier on the owl, I'm going to go back into the trees with that and push a little bit harder and just form these trees in the background, blend them down a bit. We don't want too much texture there because we want those to be more solid. And I'm going to put them in and then blend them with my finger almost immediately. Remember that they are a broken line, that the leaves come across them, so you're going to be And with the deep purple, we're going to put the trees back in and um, some of the ground as well. They're quite sharp, some of these trees are coming up in between here, they're quite dark. And go over some of the darks you've just done with the deep blues, and especially on the bottom here where there's more texturing and, and around the wings where it's darker. Now that's our mediums down to darks, and from here is where you go, wow, because we're going to put the lights in. 
Um, I'm going to start with the, uh, the bluebells, which actually I'm going to use quite a light grey on. Um, I'm going to start with um, an A34, which is a medium sort of mow grey, and just going between these trees back here quite heavily now because we've got a lot of pastel on here and we can't and make the marks about the bluebells. So I'm making jiggly jaggedy marks here about these bluebells that are coming through in the background. Jig jag marks between the trees here coming across in stripes of bluebells and I'm pressing very hard now to get almost pure pastel on in here. I'll come down these other trees in places too. I'm just picking up on a slightly more purple one now, a BV5, just to get a bit more of the purple, deep purple back in there before I put the sunlight in. And once we start putting the sunlight in the whole thing will come to life. BV5 which is a, a medium mauve the ground in the background. Now what are we going to use for the bluebells? In fact, I think you know, we'd be talking about some of the lighter pinks now, but I'm going to go to a, just try out a light pink a minute. Let's see if this red 12 does the job. Yes, that just catches the light nicely through there. So it's not a light blue as you might think. We're going to actually use the purples against the pinks to give the feeling of the sunlight coming over these bluebells and just dot and dash in, just mark in these bluebells catching the highlights into the very distance there before we come on to the, the greens which are going to totally transform it the greens and the yellows will totally transform this and put these little bits of sunlight catching the tops of grasses and leaves as they come in through here I'm going to bring some of this light, this pink, up in amongst the trees as well because I want them to link together and I want the sunlight coming through the trees here. So I'm just going the next of my lightest, the greens and the yellows, I'm going on to a green 22 which is quite a light warm green. And again, make the marks about what is here, do an impression, just make marks that are about, in approximately the right places, what is there and this should start to work. So all the bits of sunlight behind the trees the gaps in between the trees where the sunlight catches where the sunlight catches these leaves and what was that? green 22 a very light yellowy green not too bright but because the very bright ones are going to use later but make your marks that's it about the branches look at the photograph keep looking you don't have to copy them exactly that's not what i'm after but i am after you putting the right textures the right marks and the right shapes in the right places and then we should start to really get this to look like light coming through the trees. So we're working up to our largest colours. We're going to go to a very light yellow next and really make the sun come through here. Right. My second to final colour, my penultimate colour, A12, a very lovely mid-bright yellow. Not a cream, it is a bright yellow. And dots and dashes again, making marks about these leaf ends of these branches that are catching the daylight catching the sunlight coming through between and there's loads of it on the right hand side there's mass, masses and masses on the right hand side here, um, as it comes through and then it, dis it uh, diffuses as it comes into the background woodland and this is where you need pure pastel so when you're dotting and dashing now if you're wanting a little point of light, then twist the pastel slightly as you push it on. Twist it just slightly as you push it on and you'll get lovely um, little dots of light. Can you see what I've done now? You get, get as far as we've got. Look, you can see the light coming in. Yeah, we've got the medium green and now we've got the yellow going on at the end. And that's going to really bring out this sunlight. This is our last carefully just where they are in between the trees and nice and clean nice and pure twist the pastel if you need to because the paper's getting a bit soaked with pastel by now I suspect so you'll have to be quite strong with it if you want this to work right 
as would be my last colours, I'm now going to go back in with a very, very light. I'm just going to try a bit of white, see if that works. Yeah. Now I'm going to hit some white behind here as the light comes through the trees at the very end. And I can bring other colours in. I want a few more warmer colours in here yet. I just want to get the basics done so you can see how to go with it. From here we can go lighter or darker. From here I can go back in with my dark colours, my blacks, and bring them out more or whatever. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Let's get another, another one to go there. Look, who's is that? So we'll have another hour next week. And just for fun for the moment, I just give you an idea that you need to get back to the impressionist work. You can't see impressionist work so close so up. If I just take this along for a minute. Yeah, the head's too small. You can see how nice they're all are. Oh, yeah. Who's is that one? That's a lovely one too. Yeah. That's a good one, John, isn't it? They both look smashing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, trust me, work with me. We need to just bring the highlights out now and get all these warm and cools away. It's just finishing off in another half an hour to an hour. Another cut there. There's the ammo look without all the scones. Yeah. <laughs> Your marks day will need to be more about the leaves as well, you see. Yeah. Just we need to, what we're doing is we're looking at what's there and it travels through your eye, down your arm, into the fingertips, and you must then make the marks in the fingertips about what you're seeing with the eyes. Right. So we're seeing the lines in the tree, but we're not getting the textures across. Right. As you're seeing, I'm doing a bit more there. Yeah. Well, no, no, it's all right, it's a good start. Well here we are back for a second session, we all need to just finish these pictures off, so uh, I've come back in again with my new unison apron as well, which is lovely, um, just to put up, put, to carry on with these light greens and yellows and just finally touch up some of the details. We're going to use um, a red 11 in here too because I noticed when doing the other owl, this one I did the other day, uh, you notice there's more red into here, a bit, there's a, something I missed out, the red 11 is very useful in this as well. But the two owls there, you can see the differences in them. You see that difference that warm makes there? Just, you can see that's, that's a lot warmer, isn't it, that one, yeah. than the other one. Yeah. And that, that red 11 just brings that out. Also on this one I was able, because we, we were working on um, watercolour paper on this one, so I was actually able to use water with a little square brush and put those um, marks down the wing with the brush which is a lot easier as well because actually the first thing I want to do then as on the other owl is just bring out some of these warmer colours which I hadn't got on here and it'll just bring out the lovely yellows a bit more we're not having to blend now but we, we could do but just let's see how that red immediately works and brings the yellows out right through into here just marking those little bits of feather and we could use water on this to do the bands as well just been discussing that with the students saying that we could use a little square brush even on pastel paper to put the, um, the, the dark bands in with and that, that little bit of red makes all that difference I've got a feeling this red's coming into the background here as well yes I'm having some of that this red 11 which is a lovely one I'm having some of it coming in amongst the bluebells and you think well how can you have red amongst the bluebells well because we're playing opposites if we want something to work, we've got the rough against the smooth, the light against the dark, and the warm against the cool. So if I start using this red now, it's going to make the cooler colours seem cooler. If I put a warm next to a cool, then the warm will seem warmer and the cool will seem cooler. There's even little bits of warm with this warm coming out in the trees I see here as well. Right through. Really look for these colours now. And you say go as detailed as you want it's not just going to be dots and dashes there are going to be some areas for instance where the trees um, actually break out from the branches they um, will have an area of say leaves here which is almost linked together I'm using a very light yellow this is a she calls itself a green 36 so it is a so greeny yellow anyway I want a warmer yellow in here with that I'm going to play these warms against cools. That's coming right down to the back here. It's coming through in the background there, even amongst the bluebells here. Yeah. And of course we get a unity that way as well. It means that um, one colour is coming into another and it makes things look a lot more united. Catching, catching the, the light coming through, the sunlight coming through there. 
Uh, come up whenever you like. I mean, if you want to bring your picture, it would be a good idea at some stage, if you're not sure where you're going with your colours, bring your picture up here and just put it next to mine and then you can see colours that you've missed. It might be a lot easier for you that way. Much, much richer yellow. This is uh, Y9. It's almost an orangey yellow to give a bit more sunlight just coming through here on this warmer patch. So this is a Y9, which is a very useful deep rich orangey yellow to really bring out these lighter ones. I've got to make sure of my darks against it as well. Go back in there with some of these darks just showing where things finish. This one at the moment is a CB2, which is a very deep warm purple, very, very deep. It's very easy to let things go too flat. You've really got to keep working the lights against the darks. The lights coming through. I've, I've gone on to a, that lovely deep rich orange as well. Come, right. It comes yeah. in here. Yes. So you've only got the one yellow at the moment in green. Yeah. So that rich orangey will help you, won't it? Yes. Bluebell's looking good. Amongst that, don't forget, we've got these little bits of, 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 of the, the RE11, this one, which is what you also want for your owl. If I put a little yeah. bit on, yeah. I'll just see where I put a little bit, which is just here. I mean, look at the difference that makes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that comes into the bluebells. And I look at that, just those yeah. two, suddenly they jump. Yeah. One colour can just yeah. totally, that's the RE11. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's the same with the background, the wings. If you want these wings to stand out, then make sure you've got the dark of the trees against the light of the owl's wings. Uh, it's, it, it, keep playing these opposites of rough, smooth, light, dark, warm, cool. Yeah. I'm going to try a little bit of orange now. This is an A13. It's an orange, just to bring a bit of that warmth, which again will make the owl look cooler against the warmth of the sun. Just coming through, catching these bits of light here. Is there any warmth in the owl as well? Maybe a little bit, yes. We'll make that owl a fraction warmer here. So when you see a colour, use it. Going through there, through here, down through here. Yeah, through there. Yeah. Very, very cool greens and blues. We've got some really deep turquoises going on down in here. And blues. Ooh. I'm even finding that greens coming into the bottom wing and the tips of the feathers there as the light catches. Now I'm using a BE18 on here just to get these warmer darks on the side of the sun on the right hand side here just to get a bit more warmth going amongst the tree trunks just there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue which is that beautiful BV12. I just want to get a little bit more of the ultramarine just glowing into the across the picture to make, to make the warms and cools work a bit better. So these cools are going to push it back. We've got the warms coming forward, now I want the, these lovely blues to push the picture back in, take the background back. I'm using a VG6, a blue-green, and six is a very, very light blue just to finish off amongst the trees. <coughs> I'll come through the bluebells a little here and there as well. Well, I think I've gone as far as I'm going to go with mine. So if you want to put yours against at any time and see the colours. I've pulled out quite a few more colours since you last looked. You're not happy with you, right? No. I'm not happy with the whole. Sorry. You know. Yeah. Well,
That's that one done then. Three. Actually, that's coming really well. Yeah. And now you've really found those colours. You are becoming a colourist. That's fantastic. Oh yes, you've got the, you see, exaggerating these angles is giving the bird speed to go through, isn't it? It's giving yeah. it movement. I've given it a bigger f <laughs> The two owls together. The difference in the same sort of coloration, but the difference of the colour to speak behind them, the owls look totally different. Just needed finishing off, yeah. With the hard bit was last week, the drawing alone was hard, wasn't it? I mean, it's quite hard to get the scale. Yeah, but I think with pastels, it's not, to, not meant to be sort of exactly like it. I'll be from the corner, John. Maybe that one. What the good regular day? John's upside down. Like that, literally. Actually, it's a pastel. It's a pastel. I do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.